Off field. Left. What I want. I love the way she rocked it. I love the way she moved it. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. We have another Washington Commanders post game video. And in today's video, I'm here with yet another Washington Commanders post game reaction as we just finished watching the Washington Commanders lose yet again to the San Francisco 49ers. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload new videos like this to the channel. One road to 7,000 subscribers. Also, subscribe to Juan Gotti TV as I am about to go into my new journey and i want to keep take you guys along with me uh happy new year eve to everybody you know what i'm saying so happy new year 2024 hopefully this is going to be a prosper one for you in your real life and hopefully this is the, the the start of something new for the washington commanders all right let's start the video off on a positive note the eagles just lost they're in shambles i'm here for the eagles downfall man i am um now the, the cardinals they're four and twelve i don't necessarily know uh, if that moves us ahead of them or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping maybe, maybe, I don't know if we should check out Tankathon. The Chicago Bears have now clinched no one overall pick, uh, obviously. Um, so I, I don't know if Arizona is definitely going to be able to get jumped by us, but they are, per John Kime, uh, them winning helped us. So let's go ahead and see if we look at Tankathon right now and see where the Washington command is, uh, actually uh sit at right now um after today's action that started off with a positive note before we get into the whole post game video so yes we now have the number two overall pick <laughs> let's go all right all right this is live reaction number two overall pick has now gone to the washington commanders Whoa! Alrighty, alright. We're in the same predicament we were in four years ago when Ron Rivera was high. We were the number two overall pick. We took Chase Young. Now we're getting a new regime and we're gonna have number two overall pick again. Man! Ooh! Caleb Williams for a lot of people that want Caleb Williams. This just got a lot more easier. Now, I don't know if Chicago is gonna stick with Justin Fields, but if they do. That means Caleb Williams is gonna be here in Washington. I love Sam Howe, man, and um, I, I truly think we messed him up. And I think he he can be good somewhere else. But if we're the number two overall pick, I mean, there's no way we can pass up on an opportunity to get like a guy like Caleb Williams or someone like that. Uh, we're the number two overall pick, guys. See, this video was gonna be a little bit negative because we lost again, but never mind. I don't care about the game. We are now the number two overall pick. Uh, whoo! I'm excited. I don't know if Washington is they're going to be able to then either trade up to number one to to if they if they feel like Chicago is going to going to threaten them, or if they're going to sit at number two and 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 and, and roll the dice and basically see wherever uh it, it should, see if Chicago actually takes Caleb Williams or not. Um, because other than that. I haven't really done all my homework, but I don't know if there's anybody else that I would want to take at number two. I don't know if I want would take Drake May at two. I don't know if I would take Michael Penix. I don't know if I would take Jaden Daniels uh, or whoever else. I think Caleb was the only guy that I'm like willing to necessarily take right there. Uh, but man, this is an exciting destination for the new GM, the new head coach, new regime. We are now the number two overall pick, and, and it's gonna take it's gonna go by fast for me because y'all know I'm gonna be going in a uh, basic training, so. Uh, by the time I get back, draft gonna be right here, so I don't really gotta worry about you know thinking about it too much. Uh, whoo! This is this this video turned positive, but now that we got that established, let's go ahead and talk about this game we just finished watching. Uh, the Washington Commanders they lost yet yet again, obviously. Uh, Sam Howe, um, we know he was not supposed to start today, but uh, apparently Jacoby Brissett had some hamstring tightness and he was a late uh late game you know decision to be out. Uh, Sam Howell, he, he had some solid moments today. Um, it was some plays early on where I'm like, why are we waiting to week 17 to finally see this Terry McClellan, uh, uh, right down the sideline look similar to week 18 game versus Dallas, right? Uh, then they had, they hit, they hit Terry McClellan with a quick pass, you know, a quick pop, like, uh, 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 end around pass. 
I'm like, where was this at all year long? Then Terry McLaurin goes up top, uh, catches the touchdown pass. That's for all the people that say Terry McLaurin is washed. Terry McLaurin isn't a isn't a top guy. He isn't a lead. All y'all guys can suck it. Terry McLaurin is still that dude, and I'm glad he he showed y'all. He's on his way to yet another thousand yard season, especially um, this one for me is special. I know a thousand yards is not that special anymore. But for me, it is for him because what he's been through since he's been coming here with quarterback play, and especially this year with EB basically not trying to get him the ball, Sam Howe not trying to get him the ball, he still found a way to get a thousand yards. Terry McLaurin's that guy. Uh, Sam Howe, um, to me, he still looks a little bit. He he looked a little bit more comfortable early on, but then as we got later into the season, into the oh not season but into the game rather, he he kind of reverted back to the last couple of um the last couple of weeks where Sam Howe was looking pretty bad. Like he looked like he was rushing. He wasn't looking like like steady in the pocket. He was looking nervous. Like you know what I'm saying? He reverted back to that and then he ended up with two picks. Now I will say this the pick that that got caused by Nick Bosa's pressure. If it was a if he if it was a clean pocket, he probably would have delivered a good ball to Terry McClone, but he got hit by, by Nick Bosa. Then the second pick he got hit in the helmet, and they didn't call it. Now, I'm not making excuses for Sam Howe, but I'm just saying those things are affecting him. And, again, he's a 23-year-old guy. It just sucks for him that he can't develop the right way because he was a fifth-round pick. This was really his only shot at getting the opportunity to show what he can do. Um, and he's going to have to do it elsewhere. He, he's probably going to be here to back up. He's probably going to be here as the backup, but um you you've seen crazier things. Like maybe one of these guys with a veteran guy, like in the in the in their in their, uh, in their team, like the Rams or something like that, they know Matt Stafford is coming down to the end of his career. He probably got like a couple years left in him. Sam Howe can go there, right? And Sam Howe could definitely go to a team like the Jets to back up Aaron Rodgers for a couple years. I don't know. I'm just talking about names. Uh, if they did want to make like a draft day trade or something like that for Sam Howe, but um. He, he just he still looks rattled and um it, it sucks it sucks because you 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 seen the potential early on um and from time to time you see the potential that he has but he just can't put it all together anymore uh Eric Benley play calling to me was still inconsistent and still not good I still don't like how he rolls his quarterback out to the left away from the receivers to have him throw across his body he rolls Sam Hall out to the left and his receivers are running routes to the right side of the field that makes no sense to me. Um, it, it also kills my mind how effective the run game was today. And it was just like, why haven't you been doing this all year long? Um, have you noticed? And I know Trent Scott, he, he has some play, had some plays today where he was like, come on, Trent. But he was going up against Nick Bosa. Cut him a break. To me, he for, for me, I think he did a solid job today. Cornelius Lucas did a solid job today. Sadiq Charles did a solid job today. It was like, I only could imagine, what if we would have made these changes earlier? Do y'all think the season would have been different if we would have made changes like this early in the season? If we would have inserted Cornelius Lucas at left tackle? If we would have inserted maybe a guy like Trent Scott at right tackle? You know what I'm saying? You know, the defense was so bad today and was so banged up. We had guys like Nick Whiteside out there playing, man. Caillou Blue Kelly. Christian Holmes ended up getting hurt in prayers with the Christian Holmes because it was a scary situation that happened with him, but he looked to be fine. Uh, um... It was just, it's just crazy. That defense is so pitiful. Emmanuel Forbes, oh, my God. And I understand. Y'all going to be like, Juan, you got to let him develop. But the guy, he's just so little, man. He is so small. But Brandon Ayuk abusing him. You know what I'm saying? He's just so little, bro. And, and it, it, at this point, and I know he still has a couple years left, obviously, to get better. Four years or whatnot. But at this point, it just feels like that was a reach. Um, Because I just don't... <laughs> To me, the way his the way he's built, I just don't see it. Like even if he gets strong, right? Even if he gets stronger, is he gonna is he is, is he gonna be that much better? Cause his frame is just so malnourished and frail. I just I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't want to give up on a young fella, but it's just hard to, for me to believe at this current moment that he's gonna get that much better and that much bigger over the off season. But I'm hoping he he comes out next year and he balls. Um. Um, defensively again, uh, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, they were all right today. Uh, Cody Barton was absolutely horrendous at times today. 
uh, secondary game was, was pretty much banged up. Tariq Castro Fields was a backup of the backup, and he got hurt again today. Like, it's just bad. Next week is going to be uh, crazy to see who plays in the final game of the season. I don't expect none of the starters to really play. Uh, Kendall Fuller, Benjamin St. Juice, all those guys. Uh, offensively, again, Sam Howe, he was all right. Brian Robinson was amazing today. Uh, Sam Howe, two picks, and I understand those two picks are bad, but if you watch the game, you can see the, like, it, it was his fault, but a lot of it was still dealt with pressure. Uh, but Brian Robinson is slowly becoming one of my favorite commanders. Um, I think I said on the, on the live that he's my new favorite commander. I love Terry. Terry is still my dog, but I don't know. B-Rob is amazing, man. And this coming from a guy that didn't even like the pick. I didn't necessarily dislike Brian Robinson to play. I just didn't like the pick because I didn't. I didn't felt like we didn't need one uh, running back at that time. Antonio Gibson was solid today. Uh, Logan Thomas, it just seems like he runs that same old sit-down route five yards in the middle of the field. Uh, uh, Sam Howe really doesn't want to look down the field anymore. He's always looking for that check down. It, it just looks like when Sam Howe plays, he look, it looks like they've bashed. You got to get the ball out your hands. You got to find an incompletion because that's how he plays now. He plays like he's just trying to, like the ball is on fire, right? And he got to get it out. Like it's a hot potato. It, it, that's how he plays. He plays like it's a hot potato in his hand. Uh, like he he gotta get it out of his hand. Ah, it's too hot. It's too hot. I gotta find. I gotta find out. Like he doesn't sit there. He's not composed anymore. And I feel like a lot of that was due to the sacks and due to the coaching staff trying to bash into his head that he needs to get the ball out of his hands. Um, they kept saying constantly on the and, I, and this is for all the EB people out there, all the EB people out there that think he's so good. Listen to the commentators. The commentators say I just don't understand the route combinations on some of these plays. They they just don't. They don't add up to me. Right. And then they had the nerve to continue to say, Ron Rivera, he's coaching for a job elsewhere. Yeah, Eric Bieniemy's coaching for a job elsewhere. No, he's not. Ron Rivera's not getting a head coaching job. Eric Bieniemy, I would be, I would, I would be, literally appalled if he found a way to get a head coaching job this offseason. Um, but yeah, man, this video is positive for me because we are now the number two overall pick in the draft. And um, <laughs> we probably going to end up with getting Caleb Williams, potentially. I mean, I'm hoping Chicago stick with Justin Fields for one more year. Please, let us get Caleb Williams. Other than that, what do y'all see us doing with the number two overall pick? Leave it down below in the comment section. Your Washington Commanders now have the number two overall pick after losing to the 49ers um, today. And the Cardinals winning versus the Eagles. So shout out to the Cardinals for helping us out. Um, and Eagles, they're in shambles, man. <laughs> so today, to me, for me, is a good New Year's Eve. Uh, let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section. As always, me and boy, one, I got it. Like, comment, subscribe. Those are the Washington Commanders. On the road to 7,000 subscribers, so we greatly appreciate it if you guys can hit that subscribe button and help me get there as soon as possible. See y'all later. Come on. Peace.